Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of IIT India's Walk the Tech Talk series season 2 in association with India Automated. In case you have missed out on any of our previous episodes or episodes of season 1 of Walk the Tech Talk series, then please do check them out on IIT India's YouTube channel. Before we get on with today's session, I would like to give you a sneak peek into the world of the IIT. The Institution of Engineering and Technology is one of the oldest and largest professional society for engineers. Soon to turn 150, our mission is to engineer a better world. Our areas of focus include future technologies, future of work, and future of mobility and transport. Now, in case you want to become a member of the IET, all that you will need to do is send us an email at indiamembership at the rate the IET.in. Now, without further delay, I would like to bring on stage your host for this series, Mr. Pranjal Sharma, the author of India Automated. Hi, Pranjal. Hi, Vijani. How are you doing? Hi. I'm okay. So I'm just going to leave the stage for you to uh, invite our speaker guest and also to introduce the topic of discussion today. Over to you. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining in again for this edition of Walk the Tech Talk. And joining me now is Suman Bose, who is... Uh, a co-founder of GoFar Investments and Advisory. Uh, Suma, thanks for being with us today. My pleasure, Pranjal. And, uh, you know, the theme, of course, is, uh, you know, you are a tech, uh, you have a long career, decades-long career in technology, but now I think the great uh, combination is about technology and sustainability. So, you know, that's what we want to talk about, how sustainability can be improved, enhanced, and perhaps uh, spread across to all societies using technology. But let's begin a bit, a little bit with the, the kind of tech uh, background that you have. Uh, in your career, you have looked at tech mostly from the industrial and manufacturing side. Is that right? Yeah, mostly industrial and manufacturing, but across cutting across uh, multiple uh, domains of applications and, and across multiple continents. So, yeah. So how did this interest in uh, sustainability come in? Why do you think that technology which has really been driven and uh, paid for and funded and grown by the manufacturing industry, especially if you look at robotics or uh, automation. Uh, why is technology and sustainability coming together? So, uh, Pranjal, if you see, uh, they are not at an, at an odd. In fact, uh, uh, in various, many, many ways, the companies were engaging in the topic of sustainability without possibly talking about it as sustainability. But uh, what has happened since, uh, I think, the late 90s and the early 2000s is that the awareness of uh, sustainability as a topic, uh, the awareness that of around the environment, and around livelihood, around uh, skills, all of that has kind of heightened. So this conversation that you hear now is a result of, uh, one is increase of awareness, number two is uh, you know, there are quite a few crises also that has happened in the, in the and we are right now living in one of the other crises, a healthcare crisis. But these crises has also brought into fold uh, things that were broken. Many of the systems that the world today lives in with, like, for example, let's take education, you know, the four walls of education or the courtrooms, the four walls of a courtroom uh, or a dispensary for healthcare. All of that is uh, actually a part of, uh, you know, a design, a system that was designed in the 1700s. But, but it, was, it was definitely broken. But now what has happened because of these crises, and in, 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 in fact, the current crisis has actually ripped open the guts and made it more, much more visible that these systems are broken and they need to be fixed. And they need to be fixed now with a view of both now and the future. And that's what sustainability is all about. It's about now and the future. And bring them together under the three Ps as people talk about the people, the planet, and the profits. So profits is a very important part it's not without profits because without profits you cannot create sustainability so you know sustainability is is a very wide subject it, it is about as much about responsible consumption as responsible uh, uh, production not to mention the uh, the whole issue of policies which can encourage both uh, but which aspects of sustainability are being uh, you know driven by technology today all in fact, technology, I would say rather, it's like the oxygen in there. It's a, it's a, it, it, it has to be and it should be more and more invisible. It should be becoming the fabric of the society. 
So if you take the three P's that I spoke about, whether the way you encourage and you bring out profits, it is intrinsically linked with livelihood. Livelihood is intrinsically linked with education. Education is linked with healthcare. So, and in all of that, uh, that network of network, as I call it, is being uh, facilitated by technology. So technology is literally the, the oxygen of uh, the world that we are living in. So and would, would you say example, that the... For example, yeah, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead, me. please. Go ahead. Go yes. ahead with the example. For example, if you see, uh, if you see uh, outcome drives uh, a lot of things. For example, outcome drives professions. Professions drive skills. Uh, when, you, when you look at, for example, healthcare as, a, as an area, uh, you have uh, an outcome of a healthy citizen and, and that drove the skills of a doctor. But suddenly, uh, if you're taking away the, the four walls of the dispensary uh, now into the, and using technology, you can reach a doctor from anywhere in the world to anywhere else. And in between, you can have uh, technology that allows, uh, you know, uh, diagnostics support, uh, uh, medical support in terms of uh, the kind of drugs or the personalization for that particular patient. This is what now fuels not a multiplier effect but literally a to the power effect so you know it's now a doctor to the power of n and not a doctor into n and that's the power of the network of network but you know if you look at sustainability one key issue is climate change and there is of course those who argue that for climate change you know we just keep talking about technology because that's fashionable but really the simplest thing is to make sure that we have more trees we have clean air uh, you know, we make sure that uh, our uh, rivers are and water bodies are not polluted. So, where does are there examples of technology making a difference uh, for climate change? Of course. Uh, for example, the first difference is about visibility. The fact that you are and I are talking about it because somebody has gone and measured and understood the debilitating impact of. Uh, there are still deniers, right, in the world who says, no, 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 nothing happens if you, you know, the world is good enough to regenerate its own oxygen, and we really don't have to do anything about it. But the reality is that because when we started measuring and those micro measures came out of technology, so you and I are now uh, aware that technology is important to even understand what the problem is uh, before even we start uh, try to attempt to uh, rectify the problem. Then you start looking at, for example, you know, uh, I was recently watching uh, uh, an episode where you know uh, some of the important scientists of our era were talking talked about, and they were saying that if you give you a billion dollar what would you invest in? And one of these scientists came back and said uh, he would invest it in battery. Because, the, for example, the moment you move to a technology like battery, you're, you're hitting at the roots uh, and low footprint, low, low or no carbon footprint battery. You're hitting at the roots of uh, dirty energy, a coal energy or a carbon-based energy. And because now you have batteries that you can generate anywhere, you can take it anywhere else. And that fuels mobility, that fuels communication, that fuels education at home, all of that with that technology of battery. So you solve that one problem of battery, you get what is called a singularity. So, you know, uh, in, the, in the projects that are happening in India, uh, the big effort is on renewable energy, where uh, technology is playing an important role in getting clean energy for India. Uh, in your work as well, Suman, what are the good examples of technology aiding sustainability in India? Uh, definitely, one is uh, in, in the area of uh, clean energy, and I think I'm, I'm, you know, the, the world has already seen the peak of uh, carbon-based fuels. So uh, the faster that demise happens, I know there is going to be a gut-wrenching pain and problem because lots of industries or the industries of the yesterday were dependent on generating uh, energy out of uh, carbon-based fuels, be it the coal, oil, gas, etc., will go through it with their own turmoil if they don't see the, the way forward uh, quickly and quick enough. But uh, aside of this, I would say things like education. Education as a fundamental right of uh, every citizen can only be driven using technology. Not just by technology, but by technology. Technology is a very important ingredient of uh, ensuring that every child gets educated. Every patient gets uh, to see a doctor. Uh, there is enough uh, you know, uh, molecular uh, understanding to gen create generics so that uh, there is no one who suffers uh, due to lack of medicine or lack of affordability of medicines. So it is affordability, it is accessibility, it is convenience uh, at, the, at the base root levels. 
uh, that's what technology would do. And so for a country like India, where the demand of a certain resource is always much higher than the availability of that resource, the way you can bridge it is the singularity of technology. So I think energy for sure, healthcare for sure, education for sure, are some of these areas where you would see a lot of impact of technology. And all of them have an impact on sustainable behavior. Uh, what about food security, Suman? 100%. So for example, if you look at food security, uh, there are two parts of it. One is food loss, the other one is food waste. Waste is a more of a developed country problem. It's the waste that happens between the shelf and the plate. Whereas loss that happens between farm and the shelf. And this farm and the shelf problem is essentially a discoverability identity. It's about what you process, how you process in the same process. Can you do multiple usage? For example, the food that or the, or the uh, uh, parts of the food that still goes into the waste, can you turn it into creating biofuel so that you can, you can start creating energy for your processing plants? Can you create discoverability of your farmers so that the farmer produce can be supported by uh, a certain amount of uh, you know, funding which directly gets into the farmer's hand and not through the middleman and therefore the, you know, the farm income is uh, elevated? And the farm life is elevated so that the farmer's children can go to school. So, you know, these are all these beautiful interlinkages that you will see will happen the moment you start doing discoverability using technology. And so food but, security is one area, for example, we are working on where we are realizing every day we are finding a newer use case of the same set of technology tools. But the technology, the beauty of it is it is invisible because it's finally at the end of the day, the food you produce, the food you process and the food you, you and I eat. Hmm. There is a question, you know, uh, Suman, we this time only for one last question from one of the viewers in terms of this, uh, we referred to it earlier. What will it take for us to make a strong transition from dirty energy to clean energy? Well, uh, I think uh, one is, of course, the resolution. Uh, the resolution is has to be, you know, you know, there has to be a belief that we can make it happen and we can make it happen in the next few years and not in the next few decades. That's number one. Number two is the tools are already available. The tools are there. Uh, the, the kind of energy we are talking about, it's there. Is it a 100% proven uh, uh, you know, uh, mode of uh, generating of uh, power? The answer may be no. But then there, is, there has never been a perfect uh, wheel. You know? so you don't, but you don't have to go and reinvent the wheel because there isn't a perfect wheel. It but do we need a transition? Do, do, we need, do we need transition technology? Because technology has to enable this transition, right? Uh, there are. There, all of that is in transition anyways. For example, the kind of uh, uh, bulbs that uh, glows in our in your and my home. We have long moved away from the tungsten types or the moving away from the tungsten types to the LED types, which generates, for example, consumes much less power. Uh, the, the, the carbon footfalls of our devices, the, the wattages of the phones and the, and the, and the computers that we use, or the, or, the, or the generating of the deficiency curves of the uh, of, of the automobiles that we use, for example, these are already going up. But suddenly we come to a point of inflection. And that point of inflection, you must allow that to happen. Would there be, would it be completely painless? The answer is no. But the, the, the more ready, ready we are today, it will happen that much more uh, efficiently. If you're not ready about it, then of course, you know, we will, uh, and if you're, especially if you're in a, in a world of denial, if you keep on denying that it will ever happen, then of course we'll have a problem. So, so I would assume that, and I would suggest that uh, it is inevitable. Uh, it has to happen. It has to happen for the good of all of us, for all of our lives and for the future generations to come. We must prepare for it today, work through the use cases so that the switchover doesn't become very painful for the so-called the dinosaurs era industries. But it, they, they, can, they can move into, uh, for example, an energy generating company which is using coal to uh, generate power can move into the renewables and, and uh, without uh, a loss of uh, livelihood for its employees. Thanks, Suman. I'm sure there's so much more we can talk about this. But I think this is the coming together of two great forces uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the force for demanding change in sustainable behavior as well as you know the democratic new technologies of the fourth industrial revolution which are going to drive and ensure that we can do this and as you said with the minimum pain possible thank you so much for joining us on this conversation about sustainability and technology thanks pranjal appreciate that